Hi, my name is Dustin Ramsey, and this is my presentation on Frederick Froebel's Kindergarten. Froebel gave students objects called gifts. So these were things like a sphere, a cylinder, and a cube to help students explore the world around them. There were six mentioned specifically in Froebel's work, and as of today, there are more than ten gifts. Occupations are to help students develop skills by working with objects from a certain field of work. These also help develop motor skills and help with self-esteem. I feel like the best way to describe what Froebel wanted out of a classroom is to deconstruct each one of his principles and then try to apply it to a scenario you might see in today's classroom. One of Froebel's first principles is seen up above. What he means by this is that a child is a part of life and that it in itself needs to be considered valid and important. That school isn't just a means for the child to become a productive member of society, but rather the child is a means in itself, and the same would go for the child's education. What this might look like in a classroom is letting kids be kids and letting them experience the present. For example, letting students observe the motion of a swing or the, or the way water runs down a hill. The second principle of Froebel's is seen up above. What this means to me is that the health of the child is important, and that includes all aspects of health. Today, most teachers might think about their physical health, so more progressive teachers can think about their students' mental health and their feelings. As for their spiritual aspects, this is much more tricky than it was 180 years ago. In a modern classroom, this could look like not only patching up scraped knees, but also talking about hurt feelings, helping manage mental health issues, and helping students throughout their thought process. Froebel's third principle is that learning is not compartmentalized, for everything links. Our world connects in so many interesting and fascinating ways. Froebel did not believe in subjects because he did not believe in a curriculum. Froebel believed that students will be the curriculum and that learning should not be compartmentalized into subjects. In a modern classroom, some teachers will try to merge two subjects together like science and math or language arts and science. Trying to decompartmentalize as much as they can, however, without going away from standards, a true Froebelian model will not exist inside a classroom. The fourth principle up above states that intrinsic motivation resulting in child-initiated, self-directed activity is valued. Uh, what Froebel means by this is that he believes that the child is the curriculum. The reason that he thought the student should be self-directed is because their self-interest is one of the most important drivers for their desire to learn. This is why play is so important and is such a focal point of his teaching process. In today's classroom, we might try to emulate some intrinsic motivation by allowing students to pick their own topic for a paper or an open-ended science experiment for the science fair. The fifth principle is that self-discipline is emphasized. In a Froebelian classroom, children are encouraged to develop self-discipline. There are a few reasons for this. Firstly, it is because self-discipline will help students learn better. Secondly, it helps a student understand themselves better, and when you understand yourself better, you can better assess your mental health and emotional health. In a classroom, this might look like trusting students to take something given to them and then to really study it without instruction, letting them come to their own conclusions and report back when they're ready. Frobel's sixth principle states that there are specifically receptive periods of learning at different stages of development. I took this two ways. First, that there are critical periods. These are stages students are most ready to learn certain things. In children, the critical period for being able to fluently acquire language starts at birth and goes till six years old. After this, it becomes much harder to learn a second language. There is a reason certain things are taught at certain times as well. For example, a child might not be fully developed to think abstractly, so waiting until a student can think abstractly is important for their development and their success in a classroom. The seventh principle states that what children can do rather than what they cannot do is the starting point in a child's education. Just like Maria Montessori, this method focuses on what children can do instead of what they can't do. This is important because it starts a framework for this, that the student is capable rather than questioning if they are. What this looks like in a modern classroom could be rather than seeing a student cannot do their multiplication problems. You start with the fact that they can add and subtract and you go from there, rather than teaching them multiplication without tying it to something. The eighth principle is that there is an inner life in the child, which emerges especially under favorable conditions. Children will flourish under specific conditions because innately all children want to be cared for and loved and thought of as a if you are able to have your students fe to feel important, loved, and cared for, they will feel much more invested in your classroom. 
In today's society, teachers need to be willing to stand up for their students. They need to fight for them and make sure they know that they are cared for and are in a safe classroom. That's why creating a safe space in a classroom is so important. The ninth principle is that the people, both adults and children, whom the child interacts are of central importance. Humans are social creatures, and when we interact, we share so many things. We share ideas, moods, emotions, fears, hopes, dreams, and so much more. The people a child interacts with will significantly alter their perception of the world and how it works. In an ideal classroom, your students will share the ideas they have thought about, parents and other students will be engaging in their thought processes, and parents give students the ability to help explore their ideas further. Froebel states that there are three things for a quality education. You need the child, you need the context in which the learning takes place, and the knowledge and understanding which a child develops and learns. A good way of modeling this in a classroom that Froebel might be proud of would be having student work on the walls, an environment rich with manipulatives, and the ability for students to ask questions whenever needed to aid their development. 